Let's step back a bit to that conversation. When you're talking about the electorate, you said the choices for the electorate is limited. I mean, with over 90 political parties for the next election, how would you say their choices are limited? Well, it is not the limitation is not in terms of the number of parties. Uh, the limitation is in terms of the kind of candidates which parties present to them, you know, for, for them to choose from. This is where the problem is. And uh, that is what the primaries are supposed to cure, particularly the direct primaries, so that uh, the electorate can now really find the best of the candidates who present themselves or who are presented by the party for various uh, offices. So the limitation will come in where parties massage and interfere in that process. And to me, that's actually the most important process because uh, after that, uh, the, the, the electorate is faced with some kind of fait accompli and uh, devil's choice, really, as it were. Uh, that's where the problem is. And uh, in terms of the number of parties, actually, to me, 90 is really even too many for, for us, especially at the level, given the level of our political uh, development and our voters' awareness, generally speaking. I find that too cumbersome, even on, in terms of the logistics. But what does but that the say key about? problem is in terms of parties unduly interfering with uh, the process through which candidates emerge at that level. This is where the danger is. But sir, what does that say of our leadership recruitment process across board? Problematic. It's a huge, huge problem. Because that is really the primary level for recruitment of leadership. So if you don't get it right at that level, that will uh, bedevil the entire process and eventually the quality of leadership at all the levels. Well, Prof, you know, you also happen to be at a, uh, I can call it a vantage position, a lot of young people, and you, you, you talk to them on a regular basis. But before I come to that one, let's, uh, in continuation of looking at the alternative, uh, now, you know, we heard, we had the not too young, we still have the not too young to run law. We've got uh, Nigerian, the NIM movement. At the time, there was so much verve talk and build up to giving us an alternative. Now, in terms of raising our political awareness and getting us to make the right kinds of decisions, if you assess all of those uh, scenarios, putting them all in one box as an alternative, how would you say they fed? Well, those legal and institutional frameworks are good, but I'm not too sure the condition out there is actually uh, suitable for people to simply jump in. Uh, I've participated in this process, and I'm also a student of constitutional law, constitutional history. And uh, from my understanding of the development of Nigeria's constitutionalism, you know, it takes quite some time for people to simply get into a political system. It's not a one-day affair. And uh, in particular, in our own situation, where uh, factors like God for that reason, you know, have a way of uh, waging, really, between uh, the electorate and uh, pro leadership recruitment, money is a problem. Uh, the value system in the society is a problem. And, uh, and then out there, there's a huge lack of understanding of the role of the voter. Uh, like the delegates in particular, which uh, the major parties actually use to determine their candidates, they tend to see uh, their, their position as personal rather than representative. So the, they are quite amenable to collecting money and uh, sometimes from the highest bidder, sometimes not from the highest bidder, but from people who they think are in a position to determine their continued membership as a delegate or not. So uh, for a young man who wants to participate in politics, he has to uh, you know, square up with all these uh, factors. And from what we have also noticed, young men and their socialization are not quite socialized as such to questioning the existing system. From what I've seen out there, 
Uh, yes, as we keep on telling them, they are the victims. They are the, the, they are the ones who will lose the most if we don't get the system right, if we don't get correct leadership. But at the end of the day, you know, you discover they don't have the resources, they don't have the leverage, they still have to go through these people we are talking about and these uh, institutions that, that, that we are talking about for them to make a headway. So the, the obstacles indeed are many and, and huge for somebody to simply jump into it because the law allows you to participate in it. Tell us, give us your recommendation then because uh, when different groups come up, they say they like to talk about what they refer to as the ideal. In the rural areas, they will tell the people, look, vote based on issues, don't vote based on sentiments, uh, because the next four years of your life will be determined by the decisions you make at this point in time. And then they get to the rural areas, the message doesn't fly. People are impoverished, people are hungry, and they, uh, some present them with money, and then they part with their votes for those amounts of money or whatever is offered to them. What would you recommend happen, or how do we deal with that kind of situation? Well, truly, it's a very difficult situation that we have. Um, I, I thought one, like in the constitutional amendment, we were going to have the independent candidature. Because for me, that would have made a lot of... Uh, headway because there are still people they can relate to, the voters can relate to, and uh, without having to be hazed by political parties. And so if that is there, that will present people with uh, people they, they've dealt with on a day-to-day -day basis and they, they can actually uh, trust. And then uh, secondly, government still has a role to play in terms of uh, continuous voters' education which at the moment has, have not been happening for some time. I remember in the 60s when we had, uh, you know, sh not long after the independence, we used to have all those things going on it, through cinema and through people going to address the community from time to time, you know, to encourage them, to enlighten them on what their rights are and what the role of government is. That's not happening any longer. We have institutions all over, all over the place, uh, National Orientation Commission and all those institutions, but nobody is seeing what they are doing out there. And uh, so the primary thing is for people to understand, for the voters to understand the whole essence of voting. That is what they need to understand. And then the delegates where we have to use them, you know, to understand that it is, they are in a representative capacity. It's not, it's not personal. It's not for them to make money out of it. Uh, it's not for them to trade with. But they are exercising a major responsibility on behalf of society. These are the things which they need to uh, understand. And uh, for the political parties themselves to know that the legitimacy of government and uh, everything else associated to it has to do with the way we recruit. Uh, it's affected by the way we recruit our leadership at that level. So maybe at that level, with these things, maybe as time goes by, we'll be able to uh, get around this problem. But at the moment, at the moment, uh, the situation is not too good at all.